Well, uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm just uh, going to make a few more comments on uh, a subject that I know I've covered some of, uh, more than once actually, but uh, I feel that there's a need for discussing uh, this subject again, let's say, perhaps in somewhat uh, more fresh light. Uh, it's a very controversial subject. I've got uh, friends and family members uh, by, by marriage and so forth that uh, virtually violently disagree with what my views are on this subject and I'll get into it in a moment. But uh, uh, whether you're talking about somebody who's uh, a confirmed atheist won't listen to a word about uh, God or Jesus or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, no, 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 their mind is made up. Equally, by the way, uh, I've got some friends who are uh, what you have to describe definitely as uh, fundamentalist Christians whose mind is all, they're also made up in the sense uh, they say, well, there's God, there's heaven, there's earth, there's, and uh, that's it. the universe is empty. Uh, the whole thing uh, was put together 6,000 odd years ago. And thank goodness uh, most, most uh, people accept the, the fact that the world is, is round and not flat. And the Bible doesn't say otherwise, incidentally. But there's a, a number of areas that um, I would like to raise right now that uh, do concern me in... Um, in some ways because uh, I think the evidence is building up tremendously uh, that um, the universe is filled with life uh, I got as I say people who would say oh no there's no real evidence of all that and I'd say there is and uh, I believe that God has filled the universe with, with life but in, in saying that uh, we have a situation and I've explained this to a couple of my family and friends, as I said. If you picture a big whiteboard with a line down the middle, and on the left-hand side you've got people who are committed evolutionists. They think that the whole universe and our mankind and all the rest of it uh, came about by accident. Uh, uh, big Bang and everything else followed. And uh, there's no planning, there's no thought put into the creation of human beings, uh, our mind, our, in other words, our brains, our heart, our blood, all the complicated things that we have, our eyes. All of that is entirely by chance, by accident over billions of years. Uh, I don't accept that. And uh, even, quite frankly, a number of people who say they're uh, have no faith, they don't believe in God and all that, so they have a sneaking suspicion that something's behind this, but they don't like to admit that. And then there's, as I say, fundamentalists to uh, just accept the word of the Bible, whether or not the, what's laid out before them is effectively a parable. Now, a lot of people would poo-hoo me immediately for saying that, and they, you know, Jesus talked in parables. It's quite true. You know, look at the uh, the lost sheep, the lost coin, prodigal son, all that sort of thing. But I believe that God gave us parables to help explain our existence and so forth uh, to people who could never understand the, uh, the concept or how everything would work. Uh, in, and also, incidentally, I think. Uh, it's not, when I, I, I use this title that I think that atheists and, and, and um, um, fundamentalist Christians are both right and wrong, I, sh I should explain. I think that God filled the universe with evolution, but it had been effectively pre-programmed. In other words, it was going to flow on from one thing to another over time and, and, and evolve literally over time and there were several paths that certain 
life forms could take to end up as intelligent beings, let's say, and so forth. And probably, and we're not talking here about time-wise, uh, there's a couple of thoughts come to mind. Uh, I, I would put on some uh, links, incidentally, I hope, to this. And one of them is uh, Lee Strobel's A Case for Christ. Uh, it's very, very convincing, well-researched, well, well put together argument, let's say, in a, a case for Jesus being exactly as he's described. Uh, but also, I've read books. Uh, one of them was by 18 Christians, and it was called, it was called uh, uh, Christians and Evolution. And they were convinced, and these people, some of them became, I think, uh, an astrophysicist, and I think, and a marine biologist, and a variety of other highly trained people that had gone through university and were convinced that evolution had occurred, but they they had still they retained their faith in God and so on. So I think what has happened, a lot of people do not understand this or the reasoning behind it, but I think God has created literally evolution. But then we read further on, as I say, about into things now, the more modern day, uh, not just the Bible, we see a couple of things. Firstly, uh, I was looking at, and I'm not the only person f fascinated or interested in these things, uh, Sumerian uh, history and they're, they're, they've got half a million uh, clay, baked clay tablets explaining their history and how is it that the Sumerians became a, a, a great civilization out of nothing let's say including having the, having the first uh, written language in the world uh, extremely complex mathematics, uh, astronomy, and uh, much more, uh, school systems, legal systems, uh, medicine, to the point where uh, the examination of skulls from that period indicate that some sort of surgery, probably a laser surgery or something's been done, and pe people have had brain surgery, which is extraordinary, but the evidence points directly to that. Uh, mystery, yes, uh, but when the, the language is, was translated, and it was first translated, oh, only about in the 1870s, I think, if someone could correct me on that, uh, by somebody with the most unlikely name of George Smith uh, in London. Many years later, other people... Uh, translated the language as well and then we came to, as I say to the more more recently that's to say uh, 1980s 1990s and so on and they had uh, Jeremiah Sitchin now some of his writings some people would say this is all fantasy this is just myths and, and, and stuff but it's not uh, he talks about a lot of things which would st would, would shock people uh, uh, who have the, as I say uh, who uh, doesn't have to be a, a, an atheist? Doesn't they don't have to be a a, a um, fundamentalist Christian to get shocked by the writings? But the, basically, the story is that the Anunnaki, who uh, came from this planet, uh, and the scientists right now, by the way, are searching for this planet that is on a, a well, I call it an elliptical orbit, a long elliptical orbit around. Throughout, it passes through our solar system every 3,600 years and they have been interacting with Earth for thousands of years. They say, for example, in the uh, uh, clay tablets, as I'm talking about, the Sumerians claim over 140,000 years, which to some people would seem astounding, of interaction. Um, long story about why and how and the whole thing, but it's there and they're saying, well, every, as I say, 3,600 years, the planet comes back into the solar system, passes through, and the people from there have an interaction with Earth. Now, you, some people would say straight away, oh, nonsense, oh, fantasy, science fiction. 
Well, if you do your research on it, and I'm going to provide a few links on this, by the way, so you can research it. Uh, I would appreciate it if people would research it, in fact. Uh, and then they would uh, perhaps conclude that uh, there's some truth in, in what I'm saying here. Now, on another related matter, I'm, I've ordered a couple of books. I don't know whether I can get them through the Ipswich Library, but if I can't, there are a couple of good books on uh, the giants of the earth, and now people would scoff again who are atheists. Ah, oh, it's only in the Bible. Ah, oh, this Goliath, and ah, oh, these giants are in the earth, as, as it says on Genesis 6. Well, they were. And, uh, and Goliath wasn't seven or eight feet tall. He was like 13 feet tall. And then we fast forward into the uh, uh, American Indians, and they had said that they had fought these people, these giants. And by the way, anyone who's heard of Buffalo Bill, let's just say Bill Cody, ought to look it up. He describes, and he had a party, including a doctor uh, who, who visited these uh, Indians, uh, were shown the bones of giants. Uh, right, put the hand on them, picked them up. This is all recorded. This was in about the 1870s, I think. And he wrote an bi autobiography, I believe it was published in 1904. So it's a cross-reference cross type of thing for you to look at. If you doubt what I'm saying, look into it a bit more. Once again, as I said, I'll provide a couple of links. So I am saying that those people who say that everything happened by accident and it's all, uh, all uh, entirely evolution and there's no God and all that, they're wrong. And those fundamentalist Christians who say, oh, uh, the evolution never existed and God created Adam and Eve and, and all the animals and so on, as is indicated in the, the Bible, uh, I believe they're, they're wrong. I believe it's, uh, it's uh, as I say, uh, provided by God uh, for us to try and understand how we came about and we get to things like uh, the the ark and some people say oh well, I've got a friend uh, John Edwards and he's not alone he says oh the whole world was flooded and then the ark and Noah, Noah built the ark and, and so on two by two you know put all the animals on the ark and eventually came to rest uh, on Mount Ararat and uh, uh, he and his, his wife and three three sons and three daughters-in-law created everything after that the world well I would say sorry guys uh, there's four billion species of animals bird fish and and insects in the world you couldn't fit four billion species onto the ark and how do you get the what about the Australian kangaroos and koalas and and all of that then you've got this problem that if that's if that was all, if that flooded the, you know, the whole world was flooded and you only had those people left, how did they create uh, African tribes and, and Chinese and, and other uh, races around the world out of only three, three men and three wives? So uh, sorry to have to come across as being negative on that, but that's just a fact. Uh, so once again, I will state that uh, Christians and atheists, in a sense, it's as confusing, as amazing as it might seem, are both right and wrong at the same time. They both need, frankly, to study the subject a lot more than they have. Stop being closed-minded and, and narrow-minded and all the rest of it about the subject. To do their research, and I've been uh, doing this for many years now, uh, not just that subject but on UFOs, uh, aliens and other things and some people poo-hoo that and, and criticize me for that, even family members criticize me for that. But I'm saying that uh, they all exist and there are many, too many species of them to be uh, purely evolved because even evolutionists say, oh evolution was, oh it was a miracle. Yeah, they admit that life is a, is a miracle. It can't all happen by accident, but it's a one in a trillion chance. And if you've got 10 trillion stars in this galaxy, that means you've got 10 planets in the entire galaxy that have light, intelligent life on them. But 
sorry guys, but I think it's a lot more than that. There could be hundreds if not thousands of planets in this galaxy that have intelligent life on them. So uh, I'm making these statements. Uh, here we are, as I say, 19th of February uh, 2020. And uh, um, uh, you can please yourself. I'd, I'd like to hear from anyone if, uh, in a polite and civil manner. But I welcome comments or questions, and I'd like you to have a look at the uh, the links that I'm going to provide. So thank you for viewing.